Hey, and welcome back to yet another video about Touch GFX and how to use it with the Cube IDE. Today we're talk we're going to talk about how to uh, to show information on your screen uh, from a different task uh, running on your STM microcontroller. So the first thing uh, the first thing is that we have a prerequisite that is uh, you have a project set up with in within the Cube IDE. Um, which you can uh, see in one of the old videos, or not old, but one of the other videos, um, where we have integrated Touch GFX and the Cube IDE uh, together. Uh, we have also in previous videos covered how to move your graphical assets from the internal memory to the Quad SPI memory. So, uh, so we have currently a yeah. A, Nice memory coverage here, uh, we're using 3.6% of the Quad SPI memory. So the first thing now, um, we want to be able to display um, just a single number uh, changing on the screen uh, coming from another task. So the first thing we, we're going to do is to go into the Touch GFX folder here and start the Touch GFX designer. And in the designer, um, looks like this. We have two screens, uh, screen one and two. This is just the same screens as we did in the first example. I have a, a test text here. So we'll just, uh, this is called text area one, which is fine for now. We will just uh, change the text here to uh, current value and then a colon. Um, and then we're gonna add a wildcard here, a wildcard one, and we can press this button here um, and we can set an initial value that could be, for example, I don't know, 10. And we're going to uh, check this check mark here, use wildcard buffer. And we can just set that to 3, that's fine. Uh, th what we're doing here is that we allow a wildcard. Um, so the value here is a wildcard. The, the number 10 is a wildcard. If we don't do uh, use a wildcard here, then the string current value and the colon will just become compiled into memory uh, and we want to be able to address just that number in the memory uh, and that's why we're using this wildcard buffer here um, so now we have a current value uh, 10 and we can arrange this what is important to know is that even though we have the value 10 here then in order to save memory touch gfx actually only compiles the graphical asset for the one and the zero uh, currently. So we have to go up to text here and go to resources. No, sorry, yeah, you can see here, we have a text area with the current value and then the wildcard, and then the text area wildcard itself with the value 10. So we have to go to resources. Let me just check here. No, sorry, typographies here. And uh, we have to select the right typo typography name. Let's go back here and say this is just default 20 pixels. So if we go to default 20 pixels here, we have wildcard uh, range and wildcard, char uh, wildcard characters and wildcard ranges. And the wildcard range is from zero to nine. And we also want the characters zero to nine compiled into our program so we can show them on the screen. Uh, if for some reason we have a number that is not using uh, the numbers 0 to 9, for example, if we want to display a, a character, we could say uh, we want to display uh, an asterisk instead. Uh, and if we go back here, so now now we have enabled on the in the back that we can actually show different numbers. If we didn't do this, uh, then only the, the 1 and 0 number would be available. We can generate the code here and it's complete and we can close down the touch gfx designer so now we have configured the touch gfx designer part of it and the next thing is we have to be able to provide these values to the model of touch gfx and now it gets a little bit complicated um, so inside the touch gfx folder here we have a, in the folder called uh, generated we have no, sorry, uh, in GUI here. We have the source and we have an include folder here. And um, if we unfold these, we have this 
screen one and screen two, both in the in the GUI and the, and the source here, uh, or in the source and include. So if we go to it, we everything happens on screen one, so we can just unfold these. We have the screen one view and the presenter, both CPP and HPP files. And in the model here, we have the model HPP and model CPP here. So the first thing we, we need to do is in the model CPP file here, um, we have uh, the, the tick method here is called every time we update the screen. So that is where we're going to handle uh, eventual incoming messages. And the way we're going to do this is where we, go, we are going to implement a, a, an RTOS queue. So uh, let, let's try to hang on here. Um, we start by creating a queue. And uh, the queue is, uh, is I mean, the free RTOS is written in C, so we have to start off by writing extern C, because now we have C code coming. And we're going to use the X queue. I'm trying to autocomplete here. Handle. And it doesn't know this one, so we're going to include the free RTOS. Dot h, and we're going to include, sorry, ah, include q dot h, and we're going to include task dot h. So now it should probably know this one here. Let me just save this real quick. I see. Yes, we're going to use an xq handle. Uh, and let's call this, oh, we're going to create uh, an XQ handle here. So this is the, about just the ID of the queue. Uh, we can just call it a uh, GUI message. This is based off an, uh, of uh, another example here. We can just call it message queue, just like this. Um, and in the, the model uh, down here, we can initialize this um, message queue. So we just write message, message queue, and create a, a generic queue here, generic queue, generic create here. And now we are asked how long should this length, uh, the length of the queue be, how many items could be in the in the queue, we just need one item to be available. Um, and how long is the, the item size? We just have a one. I'm just want to pass a single value, a, an integer uh, through this queue. But of course, if you have uh, another item you want to pass through a queue, you can, uh, you can create a struct and pass that uh, down the queue as well. And the queue type here um, is type zero. So uh, we can look this up. Uh, in a short while to see what's actually what it is, but for now we can just create uh, this this queue here with these parameters, and then then, we'll, then it will work. So what we have now here, we have defined uh, a, a message queue in, in in C here, and we have created. So this is just the queue handle, and then we created the queue uh, further on. And the tick model, uh, the model tick here is the method that is called every time the screen is updated. So we can, in this, uh, check if uh, a new model or a new message has come down the queue. So if we have uh, XQ uh, receive, what queue is, uh, are we listening on here? That it would be the message queue here. Um, we need to, uh, we need to to dump the information from the queue into a, a, a variable here. Um, so let's just create one real quick up here, uh, an unsigned int uh, counter equals zero. And we can use that counter here. Uh, we just need to reference the address like this. And how many ticks do we want to wait for this message to come in? So we set this to zero because we don't want to wait so the, the XQ receive here will actually wait a number of ticks before it returns, but we don't want to slow down the, the rendering of the screen at any point. So if there's not a message available at the point where 
uh, where this uh, tick method is called, we we'll just skip this. So we check if this uh, returns uh, a true here. And if we uh, we get a, a valid message, we can do uh, something uh, with the with the counter information. Okay. So now we need to uh, to pump some information into into this um, into this message queue. And I'm gonna do that uh, through my main uh, file. And previously we did the second task here. We just where we just uh, toggled the LED. Uh, so we're gonna use that as well. Um, first, we're gonna define the queue uh, again. So we, that is an X turn, uh, and there's an X queue handle. Yes, and it's called uh, message. this message queue um, probably can't do any tab completion here because it's not known in this file here but now we, can, we have the message queue and if we send a message into this message queue it should uh, pop up on the other end of the this, of the queue so when we can we can pull out information um, so what we're gonna do here in uh, in our for loop here we're going to write X send here um, and what message queue are we sending it to we're going to send it to the message message queue um, we're going to send a, a reference to value and then uh, the last information um, it's probably how many let's just see here um, yeah how many it takes to wait for the message to be sent so what we're going to do here uh, i'm just going to create a variable uh, unsigned int val equals zero here and um, we're just gonna s send the 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 address to the value and then wait zero ticks for the message to be sent and then we're gonna increase the value by one so now Every second, we should send a message from this task here into the queue, increasing the value by one every time. So now we have the queue set up from our second task into the to the model here. So we need to be able to do something with this information, and we unfold these um, files just previously. So. If you go in and look into the specifics of on the, how the, the model and the presenter and view are built together, um, you can see that the, the viewer or the view is is the the actual uh, drawing on the screen. So if we go to the screen one view dot hpp here, uh, that is of course the header file. So we can define a, a function here that we should be able to update on the screen. And uh, I'm just gonna write a simple uh, function here, a void update val, uh, and it takes, of course, an, an argument, unsigned int uh, new value, like this. So now we have created um, a method or a function. We should, of course, also implement it. So this was the HPP file. HPP file. Now we do the CPP file. So we have the screen one screen one view HPP and we have a screen one view CPP. So we need to implement the function that we just wrote. Um, we just copy the whole function header here. Um, so the first thing we need to do when we get this new value here, we need to insert that into the, uh, the, the, the wildcard buffer that we created. Uh, and to do that, we are using the SNPrintf um, so we're going to write Unicode colon colon SN printf, and then we're going to find the um, the text area one buffer, uh, and it's not available at this point. Why is it not available? Okay, so I just discovered a few um, problems here. So. We were here and I was trying to uh, access this text area one buffer. So what we're do, are we going to make sure that is of course that the, the body here is is correct. So back in the HPP file, I write, need to write int here. 
let's say this and in the cpp file here we need to make sure that we derive from the screen one view like this okay so now here we have the unicode unicode colon colon is in printf and we can access the text area one buffer here and we want to update the same amount of uh, spaces that are in this buffer so we can we have this text area one uh, underscore size uh, which is a, a constant uh, for how big the buffer is and um, we want to just insert the number of new value here like this so now we have updated the text area one buffer with the new value here um, we want to and this is where it gets a bit tricky because in order to if it be efficient touch the effects only wants to update the piece of the screen that actually change the uh, content um, so I, what I want to write here is text area one dot resize to uh, to current text like this um, but if you change a number for example from 255 to 3 then of course 3 is just a single digit so it will fit in less uh, vis visual space than the 255 and then you will actually have a result that could be 355 because 3 only occupies the first digit place of the previous number um, so there is some work to do here on making sure that you actually clean out the whole area before you um, before you draw a new text onto the screen um, but that's another story for later so what we need the last thing we need to do is to tell touch that the the area has been updated so we need to redraw it on the next uh, pass around here so what we're going to write is text area one dot invalidate and invalidate just means that this area is no longer valid you need to update this so now we have updated or written here in the in the view HPP we have created the, the method and we in the CPP we have given it some actual uh, something to do so the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to uh, call this function but since it's in the view we need to go through the presenter and we can go here in the, let me just go back here in screen one. We have the screen one presenter.hpp and we have the screen one presenter.cpp. And in the screen one presenter.hpp here, we need to create uh, a, a function that we can call. And again, we can just call, uh, uh, have a void. It doesn't really need to return anything. Uh, and we can just uh, call this uh, set new value here. Um, and of course it needs to take uh, a va value like this uh, and in the screen one presenter uh, here we can define the actual work for this one just copy this like this again we need to add the screen one presenter like this um, and then what it's going to do is just to call the view dot uh, and we have this in the screen one view here we have the update val so update val and the value we just pass that directly uh, on so we actually just have a another wrapping layer here but the, what we can do now is that we can have the um, the model update the presenter which in turn will update the view uh, one last thing we need to do is to have this set new value here that should be able uh, we should be able to find this and we need to find or to set this in the the model listener and the model listener is available uh, from the include GUI and model here model, model listener dot HPP so in the list of public methods here when create a virtual uh, virtual void just copy the whole um, function header here uh, so the model listener will be able we can and uh, the model listener will be able to know this this function here so um, now we can 
call set new value from our model.cpp uh, and update the screen. So what we will do if a number comes in uh, to the model through the queue here, we will just uh, write model uh, listener, uh, this one here, and then call the, uh, we should set new value here, and the value is the value of the counter. So the counter here is the, the unsigned inch that we got uh, from the queue. So like this, now uh, this XQ receive is called every time the model is updated. So with a little bit of luck, we should see that the number on the screen is increasing. Let's just try to build this. Should build without problems, but it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, let me just see here. Yeah, so sorry about this. Um, of course, this is not a function declaration. Um, this is a virtual function, so we need to implement the actual function like this so we can override it later on. Um, so instead of having the semicolon, we are, have the empty function body here. So let's just try and build this whole thing again. Then we should be good to go. Yes. So now we have a build that is error free here. Uh, let's press debug and see it on the screen. Yeah. And I know you cannot see it on the screen, but the idea is that we should be able to see a number increasing uh, every second, uh, which is coming from the second task. So we have downloaded the, uh, the program into the microcontroller and we have verified and everything. So now we should be able to press continue. And we can see a number that says current value and is increasing one time each second. And I still have the, the green LED blinking. So this was an example of how we can provide uh, information to be shown on the screen from another task through a queue and a small demonstration on how to set up the screen view and the screen presenters so the model can update the, the touch GFX uh, system. Thank you for watching. So this is just a small addendum. Um, when I created the, the, the wildcard buffer in the touch GFX designer, I set it to three. Uh, in, in length and that is actually not a fantastic idea so you have this uh, wildcard buffer here because the buffer size needs to be uh, null terminated so that means that if we go above 100 or 99 we have three characters in the buffer but one of them is being truncated so we actually need to increase this to four to be able to show all the values from uh, 0 to 255 that was just a small uh, addendum to the, to the video. So I hope you didn't stop when I th said thanks for watching. But thanks for watching.